there he just remembered to push the record button on the on the data recorder and so um just a little public service here announcement um the church website now has a link on it that will take you to the youtube page that by i, I don't want to give you a date but we've had so many problems uploading the videos um, onto youtube um, it, it took me about two hours on Monday to get it to upload. My goal is to have them up by Monday night um, for you. So if you know somebody, you can send them the link. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, also on our, our website, we have the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, subscribe to that. The more people that hear about the church and get, get the word out, we, we want to see people come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and, and we live in a world that is technologically driven, and that, that's what we're, the tools that we're using right now. All right, so freedom through forgiveness. We've talked about this many times before, and last week um, I was sitting down with some friends of ours, and we began talking about things that were going on in the church, and, and one of the things that was brought up is, you know, uh, how, how sometimes you know, certain people can rub you the wrong way, and, and, and you hold on to that. And, and you've got that little bit of bitterness inside of you. You might have that thorn that's kind of poking you in the side because of a situation or something that happened in the church, outside of the church. It could be many number of things. And so I, as I was preparing this week, I was looking at different passages of Scripture about forgiveness. And, you know... We tend to read Matthew 18, and th this is one of the, the primary chapters that biblical counselors will take you to when there is an issue within the church with another brother or sister of Christ. But a lot of times as Christians, we tend to read Matthew 18, and we like to read 21 and 22, and we forget about the parable that Jesus told. We forget about the, the, the picture that Jesus was trying to lay out of how important this forgiveness is because of what his father was getting ready to do. You see, the, the disciples and the people around him really hadn't grasped the whole concept of what Jesus was going to do in his earthly ministry. They were still stuck in this idea that Jesus was coming to be a conquering king to destroy the Roman Empire and rule in Jerusalem. And so Jesus replies to Peter and says, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, Jesus isn't saying here that you have to forgive somebody 490 times. And then on 491, you're on your own. That's not what he's saying here. He, he, he's, he's speaking to him saying, guys, really? You can't put a number on forgiveness. And this is why you can't put a number on forgiveness. So he tells this story of a man who owed a great debt and was given compassion by the, 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 the master. And yet when it came time for him to show the exact same compassion on a very small debt, he chose not to. And so as Jesus tells us, he says in the very end, in verse 35, he says, So my heavenly Father will also do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. And so I think it's a powerful thing that we need to think about. And so many times in, in society we, we buy into this, um, this, this idea of what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not because that's what we've been told our whole lives. And so I just want to point out a few lies that are out there about forgiveness. The first one is is that a lot of people will tell you, well, the hurt that I feel is just too big and I cannot possibly forgive that person for what they've done to me. That's a lie. That is a lie straight from the pit of hell because we have to look at what Jesus' Jesus's words here and he is showing us that, that there is no hurt out there that is too big for the forgiveness of God because he knew what was going to happen. He knew exactly what he was going to do. He's going to pay that ultimate price for our forgiveness. And what we need to understand is that big, those big things in our life that grow into monumental things that begin to destroy us from the inside out. It's the stuff that demands forgiveness since you can't fix it any other way. There's no way you're going to fix some situations. There's no way you're going to be able to go to some people, especially if they're non-Christians, but 
Some people walk around with those blinders on in their life and they're not going to hear anything. They're not, they're not going to listen to you and say, oh, well, yeah, you're, 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 you're right, Dan. I was wrong in that situation. They're not going to hear it. And so this is where we have to forgive. We forgive because it's the only way the relationship is going to get repaired. It's the only way the relationship is going to get fixed. And see, if you can't let go of that massive injury or, 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 or that terrible hurt caused by another person, it will destroy you from the inside out. I guarantee you, you will become the most bitter person that you know. And see, the bigger the hurt is, the harder you're going to fall. The bigger that hurt is, you're, you're just going to hit rock bottom and you're not going to understand how you got there. And when Christ lays it all out for us and says, here's what you do. Here's what you do. You go to that brother and sister and you ask for their forgiveness. And what we have to understand about forgiveness is that forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is for you. It's not for the other person. It is not for the person who offended you. Because forgiveness says that that person is no longer able, you're not, you are no longer going to give them or allow them the opportunity to hurt you. I forgive you for what you did. And if that person says, well, I didn't do anything and I don't feel that I need your forgiveness, that's on them. Because forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is letting go of the power that you've given that person over you. And you're telling them, you are no longer going to hurt me with the things that you say or the things that you do. And so there is no hurt that is too big. There is no pain that is, that is too big. You can forgive it. Will some be more difficult than others? Absolutely. But you can forgive. The second lie... <coughs> excuse me, is that I can't forgive until I forget what happened. Truth of the matter, you're, nev you're never going to forget. You're never going to forget. Not in the natural. Humanly, you're always going to remember those hurts. You're always going to remember those things that have happened. Now, God, can he supernaturally come in and mend your mind and mend your heart? Absolutely. I believe that with all my heart. But I'm going to tell you right now, if, if you're saying, I can't forgive that person until I forget what happened, it's not going to happen in your life. Because what you're doing is you're holding on to you, you're cherishing that hurt. And that hurt becomes your little golden calf. It becomes your idol. And, and, and you begin to worship that hurt. And you are never going to forget about it. Because it's always going to be there. Because it becomes your idol. It's... Um, you know, I, I, I know people who, who will save, you know, text messages, emails, letters, all sorts of different things about situations. And 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road, they pull it out and they read what so-and-so said about them or what happened in this situation. And, and they just, the volcano begins to boil and erupt again. And the situation's been done for years. You're never going to forget but only when you forgive, when you forgive, that's when the healing process starts. That's when God comes in and he begins to wash that memory. And he begins to cleanse your heart. He begins to cleanse your soul. And this is really important right here. Is that when you have this attitude of I can't forgive until I forget. You're trying to change the past. You're, 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 you're holding on to a situation and you're trying to change the past and we're never going to change the past. The past is the past. It happened. We move on. You're not going to change the past, but you can change your future. You can change how you deal with that situation and deal with that person. And so you can forgive without forgetting because when you forgive, that's when God comes in and begins to work in your heart and your life. The third lie is that time will heal all pain. I don't know how many times I've heard that. You know, oh, well, time will take care of that. Time heals nothing. You just become numb. You know, I, you say, time, time heals it. When, when I was 17 years old and invincible, I wrapped a motorcycle around a pole. Ended up breaking my leg. You know what? Time hasn't healed a thing. I'm 40-some years old and it still hurts. 
I'm still paying the price for the consequences of my stupidity. Time doesn't heal all things. See, you, you can try to cram those things in your heart and your life that, that you say are hurting you. You, you. you cram them into those parts of your heart and into your life. And you say, well, I'm just not going to think about it. I'm just not going to talk about it. You can shove it under the carpet or put it in the closet deep inside of your heart. And say, well, I'm just not going to open that door. But it's still there. It's still there. And at some point, you've got to open that door and everything comes flooding out again. Time doesn't heal. Forgiveness is what heals. And what we have to understand is that forgiveness is mandatory. And Carla and I joke about it, and she's like, well, well, you know, you offended me. And I said, well, hey, you got to get over it. And she says, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. You know, and we joke about it. I have to forgive you because that's what Christ modeled for us. I mean, you, you, you think about the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ, that he was perfect, that he was sinless, that he was spotless, never committed a sin, never committed a crime, never did anything wrong against anybody or anything. And yet, when he was hanging on the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's what was modeled to us. That's what we're trying to live our lives like. And so many times, well, you just don't understand, Matt, what that person said to me. You just don't understand what they did to me. You're right, I don't. But Jesus does. Jesus does. And that's who we're supposed to model our lives after. And so one, thing, or one of the things I want to point out today is that unforgiveness does not hurt the person that you're mad at. It only hurts you. And it's going to bring about some pretty harmful, painful side effects. Forgiveness begins with an action. Not your attitude. You say, well, I, I, I've forgiven him in my heart, but I've never really told them. But, but I forgive him. They'll, they'll know. I, I've forgiven him in here. No, forgiveness begins with an action. Forgiveness begins when you're at the altar and you, you realize you have a fault with a brother or sister that you lay down your, your offering and you go to them. It's an action. We have to physically do it. And so if we harbor that unforgiveness, the first thing it's going to do is going to chain you. It's going to chain you to your, your past, to all those things that you want to get rid of. And so Philippians, Paul writes in chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, he says, Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. See, Paul's got it right here. He realizes, I have to forget what has happened, and I have to reach forward to those things which are ahead and press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul understood this, that he could not look at his past and look at all the terrible things that he has done and all the terrible things that have been done to him after he came to Christ. He said, I got to look past that. I got to look to the future. I got to press forward because unforgiveness will only chain you to your past. You're going to have problems. Things are going to happen. People are going to make you mad. I mean, People are stupid, right? I mean, we, we, all, we all know how to do it the right way. And our way is always the right way. And then we look and we're like, really? Why, why would you do it that way? You know, and th those things are going to happen and people are going to offend us. And people are going to make us angry and upset. But you have a choice. You know, it might not be what you want right now. It might not be the situation that you want to be in right now, but God has a plan for that hurt in your life. He has a plan for that difficulty in your life. And what he wants you to do is he wants you to hand it over to him. He wants you to hand it over because he alone is the one who can bring peace to this painful, hurtful situation. So it changes you to your past. Number two, it produces bitterness in your life. And that bitterness will begin to fester. It will begin to grow. And it will destroy you like an infection. You know, we heard a couple prayer requests for chronic infections this morning. And there's just a myriad of drugs out there, antibiotics that we can use. And it just amazes me that with our technology today that there's things out there that we can't 
treat with antibiotics. That's that unforgiveness in our lives. We, 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 we think that, well, I'm going to deal with this myself. And the word of God is clear that no, that's not what we do. We go to our brother and sister in Christ and the Holy Spirit will be there with you. And if, if you do that, then he treats that infection. He treats that bitterness that is inside of you through his word. So we get into his word and we study his word. And when you do that, that unforgiveness, that bitterness, that anger, that resentment that you have begins to just fade away. The writer of Hebrews, Hebrews in chapter 12, verse 15 says, Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. See, he understood that if you don't let go of those things and you don't forgive the people around you, that that root of bitterness is going to take hold in your life. And anytime I start talking about roots, since my father-in-law is here this morning, I remember the very first time I got, one of the very first times I got on a dozer, we were doing a clearing job and had all of these um, hedge trees that we had to clear out for this farmer. And one of the things he told me before he left me that day, he says, now you be careful of the roots. He said, these roots can go, you know, 50 to 200 feet long and they'll come up and smack you in the cab of this dozer. I'm 19 years old. Old. I don't need to listen to an old man, right? <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, and I'd worked a couple hours, and I'm getting the hang of it, and all of a sudden I hear this go right by my head, and I'm thinking, man, something got me, and, I, and the end of this root came up and hit me right here across the side of my cheek, kept on going, and took the top of the muffler off. So he comes to pick me up from lunch and just kind of chuckles. He says, you won't make that mistake again now, will you? You know, but that's those roots. Those roots of those trees go so deep. They spread so far out. We don't understand the implications of the unforgiveness. We don't understand the implications of the bitterness, of the resentment, and how far out it reaches and how difficult it is to cut that root and get rid of it. So we have to understand that it will produce bitterness in your life. The third thing is about unforgiveness is that it opens the door to Satan himself. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, he says, Now, whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. I mean, Paul, just an incredible thought process here. And saying, yeah, you, you know what? You beat me. You stoned me. You've thrown me in jail. You've left me for dead. And I forgive you. Because if I don't forgive you, Satan's going to come in and find that one little piece. And he's going to use it. To destroy us he's going to use it to have that bitterness that resentment that anger build up inside of us see satan will use whatever he can to keep you from the kingdom of heaven it's just a simple little tool it's the most simple little tool it reminds me of um you know back when we actually had circuses you know when um uh, barnum and bailey was around they have these you know giant elephants and they have just a little tiny string, a little tiny rope wrapped around the, the elephant's leg. And you know, you're like a three ton, four ton, whatever big they are. All they gotta do is break it off, but they don't. Because when they're little baby elephants, they put these great big chains on them that they can't break. And over time, the elephant realizes I've got something wrapped around my leg. And even though it's no longer the big chain, he now thinks, I can't break that rope. I could never break the chain. I can't break this simple little thing that's wrapped around my leg. That's us. That's us when it comes to unforgiveness. We've taken something that is so simple that all we have to do is open up our hearts, open up our lives, and do as Christ commanded us to do and break that chain of unforgiveness. Break that little tiny rope of unforgiveness. 
But we don't. We let the devil hold on to that one simple little tool. The next thing it's going to do, it's going to hinder your relationship with God himself. Matthew chapter 6 is another um, passage where Jesus talks about forgiveness. Uh, verses 14 and 15, he says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. To me, that is the most crucial statement right there that Christ makes. If I don't forgive the people in my life that hurt me, that have wronged me, God looks past the price that his son paid and says, if you can't forgive people, how can I forgive you? If you can't forgive the people in your heart and your life, how can I look at my son and forgive you when you won't even forgive that little dollar bill debt that you had that somebody owed you? So forgiveness is crucial because when we hold on to unforgiveness it only hinders your life it only hurts you and the next thing is, is that forgiveness will bring about true freedom if we truly let it if we truly let it forgiveness will bring about true freedom in the book of Genesis chapter 50 is the the, the culmination of the life of Joseph and you know we, we, we've all heard the story of Joseph he was daddy's favorite child you know, right, Joshua? Daddy's favorite. I mean, they all know jo Joshua's my favorite right now. I mean, he's my little one. I tell him, Joshua and Grace, you guys can do whatever you want, but don't mess with Joshua and Grace. Okay, they're, they're, they're my babies. And this is what happened. Joseph was the favorite, and he had the brothers. And the brothers couldn't understand why he was the favorite and why he got all these things. And so we know the story. He sells him into slavery. He ends up in Potiphar's house. He ends up in prison. All these things happen to him. And when the famine comes, his brothers are out begging for food. They're looking for a way to just keep their families alive. They're not looking to make money. They're just looking for a way to keep their families alive. And they go to Egypt because they hear there's food in Egypt. And they go before their brother, not knowing it's their brother. And this is what Joseph said to them after it's been revealed of who he is. In chapter 50, starting at verse 19. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for, I, for am I in the place of God. For as, but, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Now Joseph, of all people, had the, in, in, in the human flesh, had the right to say, throw them in prison. Throw them. They're not getting anything out of me. Their families aren't getting anything out of me. Look what they did to me. I have the right to bring the hammer down on them. And he doesn't. He let go of that unforgiveness. And he forgave them and he focused. He let go of that past hurt in his life. He focused on the plan that God had for him. Because he, he understood he could not change what had happened, but he could change the future. That's the power of letting go. He let go of that hurt. He wasn't going to let it stand in the way. And no matter how bad it got, he was going to stay focused. And he was going to stay focused on his position that God had placed him in. In verse 19, he said, For am I in the place of God? He understood that God had brought him to this place to save many lives. That was his mission and he stayed focused on that mission because he was willing to forgive. In Genesis uh, 50 and 20, in 20, he said that as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as this day to save many people. He understood the mission and then he focused in and, and he held on to the promise that he knew God had given his forefathers. And so we go back to Genesis 12 and verses 2 and 3. And 
Abram, who became Abraham, God spoke to him and said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Joseph understood the promise of God. He understood that God was going to work in his life, but what he had to do is he had to let go of the past and focus on the future. And that's what we have to do. He understood that God had a plan for him and that God used him through terrible situations to save his family. He could have easily just thrown those guys in jail and said, I'm done, lock the key, I, I don't really care, I'm going to take care of the people who are around me. But Joseph figured it out. He knew that unforgiveness only leads to putting yourself into prison. And we spoil the present that we're in. And we spoil the future that is going to come. And see, the devil will keep you bound in that unforgiveness. He loves that unforgiveness. He keeps you bound in that unforgiveness to keep you from everything that God has planned for you. See, forgiveness isn't about keeping score. It's about losing count. No longer do I have little tally marks. Oh, they did this. They did this. They did this. We don't count anymore because we forgive. See, in the church today is full of people, full of people who claim to be Christians that are holding on to this past hurt. They're trying to change what happened in the past instead of looking towards the future that God has for them. They hold on to those wrongs. Some of those wrongs are significant. I'm not trying to belittle anybody and I'm not trying to put anybody down by saying that your hurts aren't real and that your hurts don't hurt. They do. But at some point, we have to let go of the past and focus on the future. And see, God doesn't care what the offense was. He only cares that it was forgiven. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. And I just pray, Lord, that you would just work in our hearts and our lives. And that you would just continue to work inside of us, Lord. Reveal to us those unforgivenesses that we have. Reveal to us those hurts that we've been holding on to for so long. And Lord, help us to understand that we can't change what has happened, but we can change what the future has in store. And we do that by forgiving. We do that by letting go and focusing in on the promises that you've laid out for us. And so, Father, I just pray today, if there be anybody here that's holding on to that bitterness, to that anger, to that, to that, that hurt and that, that, that seed of unforgiveness, I just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is just ministering in their hearts like never before. Help them. Help them, Lord, to grow. Help them to look to the future and let go of the past. We love you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, our closing hymn this morning.